जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरदारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरदारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरदारी यशोदानंद नज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वर धारी जय राधा मा दव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरधारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरधारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरधारे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे निताय गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल जय जय प्रभु पा प्रभु प्रभु पाशील प्रभु पा जय जय प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु पा श्रील प्रभु पा जय जय श्री पा श्री पा 
श्रीपाद 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 श्रीला श्रीपाद जय जय गुरुदेव 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 श्रीला गुरुदेव जय 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 गुरुदेव 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 श्रीला गुरुदेव नित्य गौर हरि बोल हरि हरि बोल नित्य गौर हरि बोल नित्य गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नित्य गौर हरि बोल नित्य गौरांग प्रेमानंदे हरि 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 बोलो जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे श्याम निताय गौरांग भगवान जय जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नैष्ठी वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस परम धर्म भागवत धर्म स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम वेरी एसेंशियल Aspect of Bhagavatam. So we are today in sixth canto of Shri Bhagavatam, chapter nineteen, entitled "The Punsavana Ritualistic Ceremony." Today is text number four. Alam te nirapekshaya, purna kama namostute, mahavibhuti pataye, namah sakala siddhaye. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanar, with the Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Sri Lakshmi Narayan. So here, uh, Mother Diti is very much inclined to perform this uh, this uh, ritualistic ceremony, this Kumsavana uh, ceremony. She should then pray to the Lord as follows. So this is. Uh, And here, Shukdev Goswami is describing how one should follow, and he is continuing here that uh, she should then pray to the Lord as follows. So, anyone who wants to perform this punsavana uh, ritual, such ceremony, to attain some objective fulfilment, so for that, uh, pleasing, pleasing the Lord, Supreme Lord, is very much essential. And for that. Once you pray like this, my dear Lord, you are full in all opulences, but I do not beg you for opulence. I simply offer my respectful obeisances unto you. You are the husband and master of Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, who has all opulences. Therefore, you are the master of all mystic yoga. I simply offer my obeisances unto you. Purport. A devotee knows how to appreciate the supreme personality of God. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachati 
पूर्णश्च पूर्णश्च पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य the personality of god had is perfect and complete and because he is completely perfect all emanations from him such as this phenomenal world are perfectly equipped is complete whole whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself because he is the complete whole even though so many complete units emanate from him he remains the complete balance therefore to take shelter of the supreme lord is required whatever devotee needs will be supplied by the complete supreme personality of god tesham nitya vivtanam yoga kshemam vahamya Therefore, a pure devotee will not ask anything from the Lord. He simply offers the Lord his respectful obeisances, and the Lord is prepared to accept whatever the devotee can secure to worship him. And the Lord is prepared to accept whatever the devotee can secure to worship him. Even patram pushpam halam poyam a leaf. flower fruit or water there is no need to artificially exert oneself it is better to be plain and simple and with respectful obeisance is offered to the lord whatever one can secure the lord is completely able to bless the devotee with all opulences translation for again shubhe go sami is continuing His instructions: How one should successfully perform this ritualistic ceremony? <laughs> one should pray to the Lord like this: My dear Lord, you are full in all opulences, but I do not beg you for opulence. I simply offer my respectful obeisances unto you. You are the husband and master of Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, who has all opulences. Therefore, you are the master of all mystic yoga. I simply offer my Obeisances unto you. And the purport concludes with this: The Lord is completely able to bless the devotee with all opulences. Oh, Madhyana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya. चक्षुरुन्मीलिगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति दामोदर स्वामी नाम नम सद्भक्तमण मणिपुरुवाय च श्रील प्रभुपादी प्रचार निरताय ते नमो महामदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय ते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरतिशे नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासार गौरभक्तविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नमः 
वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः There is no need to artificially exert oneself. It is better to be plain and simple, and with respectful obeisances offer to the Lord whatever one can secure. But uh, what must be the the motivation of a devotee? What we want to call the motivation of a pure devotee? Is it a wrong question to ask? Or is it the right question to ask? Well, depending depending upon the evolvement of our Krishna consciousness, different categories of even exclusive worship of Krishna. Even exclusive worship of Krishna, there are different categories. Of course. The exclusive worship of Krishna is the minimum standard. As yes, we are talking, speaking on the path of pure devotional service, the, the fundamental thing is the exclusive devotion of Krishna. So, uh, what is the ultimate standard? If the minimum standard is exclusive worship of Krishna, then what is the ultimate standard? Because even in the within the exclusive devotion of Krishna. One can have the motivation. One have a motive. Many sorts of even this uh, uh, punsa vana ritualistic ceremony. It is not without some motive to be fulfilled. The Lord will take care of the situation of the devotee, whatever is taking. So Prabhupada emphasizes in the middle of the purport, "Desha nitya vyuktam nam yoga chemam bahame ananyas chinta yanto mam ye janaha pari pasiku." So there also, the promise given by the Lord is there in a, a sadhaka, a devotee. Because exclusive, exclusive devotees of Krishna, they come, you know, they are moving towards the purest platform. But in the beginning stage, some lingering effect of uh, the influence of the moors or the, our situation in this material world, we are so, so much dependent. So the tendency to depend on the Lord for everything, it's, it's a wonderful aspect. And especially here, up to the nine kind of Srimad Bhagavan, the opulence aspect of the Lord is very much emphasized. Lord is all capable. So whatever you need, just approach him. This tendency is very prominent. <laughs> but the ultimate standard, as we will uh, discuss, uh, what is the ultimate standard? If there is a motive, even. The motive is uh, only the pleasure of the Lord. Exclusively, exclusively devotion to Krishna only for his own pleasure. What is there for Krishna? Even? Any endeavor, any thought, any contemplation, any speech, any action. What is there for Sri Guru in The only concern of a pure devotee only. It's very when we when we speak about pure devotee, it, uh, it, uh, it really means something very, very uniquely special. Amans. But uh, but should there be any motivation? Yes, without motivation, actually it's it's very impossible to do anything. So motivation for the sake of Krishna, that motivation puts us on the platform of the highest, the highest. Because uh, when we speak about love, love things with the conception or knowledge of the opulence of the Lord, which is very much emphasized here, correct? They love, they worship, because worship is a sign of love. Right? But it is tinged with uh, the sense of opulence. Lord is all capable, he can do everything. So, oh Lord, we love you, we worship you, because you will take care of everything. You are the provider, you are the maintainer. Like you, you are our best well-wisher. 
So that tendency is there because the knowledge of the Swarup of the Lord. Swarup is his God. That is the But it, it is not the highest, it is not the uh, purest expression of his God. That is the specific difference between Brajabhav and anyone outside Brajabhav, all Vaikun to them. Because the knowledge of the Swarup of Krishna, and, uh, then the full place love expression, purest love, is not a, not a becoming possible. Sri Bhagavatam described it attraction towards Krishna. Purest attraction. That we will uh, discuss a little later. But here, Sri Prabhupada is uh, emphasizing like uh, the instructions of the Lord, the promise the Lord makes. Ananyas Chintayam Tumam, Tesham Vitya Yogu Chemo Bahame. So this is the this is not the instruction to Arjun actually. One thing we should very in, in Bhagavad Gita in scriptures, many episodes and many instructions are for the general masses, for the uh, to to allow them to begin with. Recruiting, recruiting instructions, general instructions. So that uh, when Krishna's glory, Krishna's opulence is uh, established, that everybody would want to become interested in Krishna. Everybody would, would want to become connected to Krishna. That is the very first purpose of uh, this Krishna consciousness. This is scriptures. So Krishna gives. Wow, who wouldn't be interested in Krishna? Krishna says, whatever one lacks and whatever uh, uh, I provide, yoga. And whatever one has, he protects. Shema. So everybody will become interested in Krishna. But that is just the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Our Maharaj is doing six days seminar on Bhagavad Gita. It's a very fast, very methodic description. We are so much relishing all this. But Bhagavad Gita, 700 slokas, this is where Bhagavad Gita begins. Because this tremendous attraction to become connected. But this is just a beginning. Where Bhagavad Gita ends, where Bhagavad Gita concludes, anybody has any idea? The most mystical shloka in Bhagavad Gita, which includes everything. We sometimes wonder Sarva Dharman Manmana That is the effect of what is uh, when one takes to Krishna consciousness wholeheartedly. But in one shloka, Every aspect of all 18 chapters succinctly described in one, one shloka. Anyone can guess, I would uh, want some interaction. And we will we will try to prove how that magical, mystical shloka says everything uh, what, what we describe in Bhagavad Gita. Anybody would like to offer the answer to this question? One shloka in Bhagavad Gita is so much stands out, it explains everything. What is being systematically described by Krishna from chapter 1 to chapter 18? Concluding, you know, 18 chapters concluding. But, uh, you know, we, we must understand that Arjun ke Vyapadesh only by the pretext, under the pretext of Arjuna is an instrument. And uh, through him, Krishna is explaining to attract people at any condition state in his. So Arjun, Arjun did not need 18 chapters. Arjun is already uh, directly spoken. So here, the shloka which Prabhupada uh, taught in 922, it is not the instruction to Arjun. It is for the general mass to attract them. The shloka's instruction which Krishna directly tells Arjun taking his name or addressing him, those are the ones uh, for us sadhakas, if we want to endear ourselves to Krishna as much as uh, Arjuna or someone else, other associates, we must focus our attention where Krishna is directly telling Arjuna, you do this, taking his name. So these are two kinds of instruction in Bhagavad Gita. So anybody would like to offer that mystical shloka in Bhagavad Gita? Okay, let me ask this question. The Yoga Kshema in Bhagavad Gita is described only in two places. The so first place is this, Yoga Chema Mahavan 922. 
where else the yoga shema is described in Bhagavad Gita? Of course, Maharaj knows the answer. But anybody would like to offer? Because it would be good. Because uh, with interaction, whatever we are going to discuss today, it would be, it will, it will be held in our memory, in our contemplation for a long time. Because this uh, today's purport and injunction, it uh, it touches many many levels, many categories of devotional service, and what what we should be up to compared to where we are. So that is the thing. Just think of this in uh, 245. So Krishna says this amazing story. He said, Yoga Kshema See here, directly speaking to Arjuna, Krishna is concluding, Nidhi Yoga Kshema Don't put yourself under the expectation of you worship Krishna because uh, Krishna promised that uh, I will take care of yoga. That should not be the consciousness of Krishna is telling Arjuna. Atmavan, I am always with you. You are fully surrendered soul. So this worry about whether you will be taken care of, what will happen to you, what, what Krishna promised and uh, he should act only as per his promise. These expectations, this conditional attitude should not be in Arjuna. Should not be in us also. The Shloka says everything. Yeah, it concludes, it, it is a perfect conclusion. The perfect, the message of Bhagavad Gita is Nir Yoksham Atmavan. Like Acharyavan, Purusho Veda. When one becomes a surrendered soul to Acharya, to a pure devotee, then he can know the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Similarly, for Krishna, uh, for Arjuna, Krishna is simultaneously the Acharya and also the ultimate uh, Purusha. So Atmavan, Atma is uh, Krishna. First time in Bhagavad Gita, the word Atma appears in this shloka, 245. Before that, Krishna is saying only Dehi, you know, the soul within the Atma. Atmavan, one who possesses Atma, one who possesses Krishna. So, one who surrenders to Krishna, Krishna, he also possesses Krishna. Krishna is so, so thrilled by someone's unconditional surrender. So, <coughs> Mother Diti here, in this, uh, because uh, she is educated by her husband, who is a, who's a devotee, and she was purified. Still, because she is mother, she wants the protection of her sons and all these things. So naturally she is performing this ceremony on this path of pure devotional service. So becoming conscious of the opulence of the Lord and every prayers when revealed in Srimad Bhagavatam what we see, that first the Lord is glorified of his wonderful opulence, wonderful quality. And then also there is some supplication, some boon, some desire to but uh, the process of pure devotional service is so amazingly pleasing by itself that no other motive can survive. This, this is the point we, we must try to emphasize. That uh, ultimately Bhagavata, where it takes us. Because upon becoming overpowered by a taste of uh, pure Bhakti, Krishna says, Bhagavatam gives the Siddhanta, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayati Ashu Vairagyam Jnanam Chattar Ahitukam Ahituki Jnana Jnana means the experience. When one experiences the transcendental, most pleasing nature, or most pleasing effect of pure devotional service, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayati, it, it produces Ashu Vairagyam, spontaneous Ashu, very quickly detachment from something which is not so pleasing. In reality, material world is very pleasing apparently, but in reality, its end result is very miserable. But Vasudeva Bhakti, experiencing the 
नाम रूप इट इज सो प्लेजिंग टू दार्ट अहेतु की ज्ञान मीन्स ट्रांसेंडेंटल अहेतु की ज्ञान प्योर भक्ति सेम थिंग वन वॉट वन एक्सपीरियंस इज अहेतु की बिकॉज ज्ञान इज अहेतु एनी एक्शन कर्म है any anything we perform it is have to to fulfill some some gratification some motive and gyan has the motive for liberation but uh, this experiencing the joy of pure devotion performing pure devotional service it is so pleasing that it frees one from any motive how can when you experience something so superlative param dishpa nivartate you cannot have any motive of any uh, bhoga or uh, moksha both are wiped right out so rather one must perform pure bhakti because <clears throat> why because krishna is krishna is most lovely and also krishna is most lovable that is the platform ultimately we have to reach we must aspire we worship krishna because everyone must Answer this question to oneself. We worship Krishna because we love Him. That would be the great. That would be great, correct? Or we worship Krishna because we we need something. We love Krishna because we need need Him. Or we need Krishna because we love Him. Which is better? Ask this question. <clears throat> we love krishna because we need him we love god because we need him or we need god because he is most level god because we love him love should be the cause but there should be no cause for love because love is causeless that is the definition of love if not it is not love love should be the core love should be the motivation for us to do anything for krishna or for any anyone love for the child of the mother it's a unmotivated the joy of the child love means when we love someone we think of the joy we make the, the person the benefit beneficiary so uh, this is what is uh, very much emphasized but achieving both which is lacking like yoga and protecting that which one possesses shame then should not be the cause of concern for a pure devotee you see the point where krishna begins and he says that given the promise that i will take care of your kshem but ultimately he puts arjun to the platform that you should free yourself from that concern krishna says in bhagavad gita i personally carry what my devotee lacks and i preserve what he has he displaying this out of his affection for the devotee so krishna is doing this now krishna there is the burden of all this the only thing left for is just purely love not not because he carries my burden he is good man i love god because you know he has done lot of things for me but should not have that that kind of a tendency one has to transcend that You know, in Chaitanya Charita Amrita, the purest love is expressed to something. Mata Amore Putra Bhave Kare Na Bandhan Ati Hi Na Gyaane Kare Lala Na Pal. Can you think of this? There is no no expectation there. Rather, only giving. Love only wants to give. Wow. Krishna needs this. Krishna needs this attention because uh, he will be spoiled otherwise. Can you think of other? She binds Krishna. Nice, because it's naughty. Because 
If she does not discipline him, he will be spoiled. Can you think of it? Sakha Shuddha Sakya Kare Skandhi Arohan. Tumi Kon Bada Lok? What kind of big man do you think you are? Tumi Ami Sam. You are just the same as me. The boy is famous. Imagine, can you imagine this? Ultimately, the purest love, highest love, which totally binds Krishna. The gopis of Srimati Radharani. Kriya Jadi Maan Kari Karay Bhatsan. Maan, Roots Jana. This is a naturally spontaneous proclivity or the tendency, expression of one's love. Pure, not thinking of oh, if I if I'm root jayam, Bhagavan Sindhu Bhagavan kya karayi, I'm so root jayam. Itna adhikar in Shuddha Prem mein. There is no worry about it. Because their consciousness is totally imbued with purest love. They only want to offer. So why Krishna is not accepting their offering? This is their complaint. What else can we do some to... to to please him. We want, we want to, offer. we are ready to offer everything all time. We are ready all time to offer everything. Still, Krishna is not uh, putting his attention. That's why the man, they are doing everything systematically, keeping their time, everything, the whole consciousness, whole system is devoted to Krishna and Krishna is uh, not uh, coming to the expected standard. So what to do? So Priya Yadi Man Kare Karay Bhasana. Krishna says, because of their total dedication to me, Vedis Tuti Haite Hare Sai Muraman. I know. I cannot put any attention to Vedas and the people in Vaikuntha and Papilan. They are just glorifying my opulence. Heart is taken away from them and totally become enchanted to the gopis. Rani is the Parama gopis. So, but uh, when Krishna describes uh, this Naistri Gunya, Naistri Gunya Bhavajana, Trai Gunya Vishaya Veda, Naistri Gunya Bhavajana. So, this Trai Gunya basically covered three gunas. You know? So, in karma, in a jnana. The word karma and jnana, they take care of the three gunas. Krishna very much emphasizes. As far as the karma is concerned, the karma in a mode of goodness, karma in a mode of patience, karma in a mode of ignorance. What is that karma? In a mode of goodness, it appears as much. It appears as uh, it also, uh, mode of goodness is very much uh, eulogized in our scriptures. Praigunya Vishya Veda, especially the mode of goodness. But uh, Krishna says uh, to Lord Bud to, Bud uh, to Uddhavji that Madarpanam Nishphalamva, the karma offered to me. Mother Pranam Nishpalam even uh, not uh, desiring any truth for it, uh, any desire for its truth. Mother Pranam Nishpalam Va Satvikam Nija Karmata. Rajasam Phala Sankalpam Hinsa Prayadi Tamasam. The three categories. Even the work offered to me without uh, entering for the truth of it. Work. Krishna says even that is in the mode of goodness. Then what, what is Nirguna Karma? That is the question. It appears like uh, the karma offered to Krishna, Krishna Arpanam Astu, without any desire for oneself. That is only in the mode of goodness. Can we think of what is then a Nirguna Karma, a transcendental karma, pure bhakti? It is desiring for Krishna. Desiring for Krishna. Desiring for Krishna's joy. Krishna Prithyartham. Kintu Mat Prithyartham to Nirguna. 
anything which is done for my joy, for my pleasure, that is nirguna. Similarly, when we when when we, when we talk about praigunyam, the karma and jnana two aspects. I mean, the jnana is in Krishna. This has four categories of jnana also. Kaivalyam, Sattvikam, Jnanam, Rajo, Vaikalpi, Kampiya, Prakritam, Tamasam, Jnanam, Mannishtam, Nirgunam, Srutam. Any experience, any anything, if it does not bring Nishtha in Krishna, our attachment, our faith in Krishna, then it is within the three modes. So, so Taigunya, Jnana, even Kaivalyam. Kaivalyam means separating from matter. Aham Brahmasmi. Shivoham Soham. Shivoham Soham. This absorption, it is not also transcendental. It is also in mode of goodness. Because mode of goodness means the simple definition, the practical definition of mode of goodness means which is free from the tinge of mode of uh, passion and ignorance. But without taking shelter of Krishna, without becoming connected, connected with Krishna, this so-called mode of goodness. So Sankhya Gyan. Sankhya Gyan is in a mode of, mode of goodness, separating oneself from the matter. But that is not good enough, Krishna is describing. Mannishtam nirguna mishtam. Only the knowledge which brings us in attachment Involvement with Krishna, that alone is uh, transcendental. So, knowledge related to the self, which is beyond the conception of the body, is knowledge in a mode of goodness. Correct? But for, for the jnanis, this is like the ultimate thing, self-realization. But it is only in mode of goodness. Knowledge related to the body, the false conceptions of I and mine, Looking for option, better, betterment, that is mode of passion. But one engross, engrossment only in sense gratification is mode of effort, which makes knowledge related to Krishna, knowledge which manishtam, which makes us situated in Krishna consciousness, that is transcendent. So that is that is very much essential uh, to understand this aspect, and especially and uh, you know there is a pastime of uh, Krishna in Bhagavata with Sudama. Sudama is a pure devotee, and he is very much very much uninclined to go to Krishna, although he is his greatest friend. But his wife is very much uh, enforces him induces, almost forces him to go and she is justifying why you should not go. Isn't it true that the husband of goddess of fortune is your your friend? Ah, why don't you take you know, It is natural that a friend goes and meets a friend. Personal friend and you yourself are very exalted. This is how the logic uh, uh, the wife of Sudama explains to he is the greatest of the Yadus and now he is not anywhere else. He has settled in Dwarka. So definitely you will see him. So your effort to go to Dwarka visit will, will not be good for you. And then she is glorifying the Krishna is here. Please approach him. And he will definitely uh, get rid of your poverty which, with which we are suffering. So why are you deliberately suffering? Why don't you just, uh, you know, a friend goes to a friend and a friend in need is friend indeed. This is the common sense. Why are you hesitating? Especially the instructions here, smaltaha pad kamalam. Smaltaha pad kamalam atmanam pi yachati. This is the instruction here. The wife of Sudha is here. The Lord is so wonderful that simply by remembering Him, Smartha Pada Kamalam, Atmanam Abhiyachati, He is ready to offer everything to Himself. This is the glory. If somebody remembers 
Krishna. When whenever somebody is asking, somebody is looking for me, somebody is thinking of me, what he needs. When it comes to giving, Krishna is capable of giving himself. That's where this context of today's quotation uh, as Om Purna Madhya Purna Madam Purna Purna Mudashita. Krishna can offer himself, still he remains himself. So this, this sloka is very deep. We are just trying to get the context when the devotee is uh, glorifying Krishna and getting something fulfilled, it is not going to diminish the Lord. So this is the logic Sudama Vipta's wife is that he should go. And if we if the argument is that, oh, Krishna is equally disposed to everybody, everybody is just reaping the fruit of their actions. So Krishna is not playing partiality. But uh, the most beautiful thing in Srimad Bhagavatam this episode, where the argument, mother, the wife of Sudama said, that uh, you just visit the Lord. Though the Lord may not give anything, but those who are devoted to Him, those who are very close to Him, they will see your situation. They will bless you with some of it. So this is this is the thing. The Lord doesn't have to do anything. Parashya Shakti Vividhaya Shriyate. Those who are devoted to Him are also His Shaktis. Antaranga Shakti, Vairanga Shakti, or Tathasa Shakti. Every Shakti by Swarup is serving, fulfilling the purpose of the Lord, fulfilling the mission of the Lord. So, if you go and approach him just out of friendship, even if the Lord is not inclined to give you right away because of whatever thing, but his, uh, those who are devoted to him, those his associates, they will definitely bless you. So, the whole idea is uh, how we raise our consciousness when Krishna uh, speaking to Uddhavaji. As far as dearness is concerned, uh, the four Purusharthas which we talk about uh, ultimately is the Prema Purushartha. Giving up all other paths and engaging exclusively in pure devotion. Who does this? Although the Vedic scriptures, depending on the adhikara and the conditioning of a living entity, dharma is the calm emotion. His four goals are in his eyes. But what is also? It is not that only dharma is the kama moksha or the karma or jnana, basically. Eh? Karma and jnana uh, take care of uh, our dharma is the kama moksha. But what is also described in a very selective, like the essence, like the uh, butter in the milk, you know. If you see the milk, we don't see the butter. But the bhakti is also uh, the very purpose of the Vedas is the pure Bhakti. But what on the end? Why, why the very purpose of Vedas is Bhakti? Because only through Bhakti alone, the living entity, we can attain the supreme destination. We can attain the supreme only by pure Bhakti. Bhaktyaham ekaya gaya. Shraddhaya atma priya satam. Think of this instruction, Krishna. Bhaktyaham ekaya gaya. I can be attained only by pure devotion. Ekaya matu pure devotion. Bhaktiyam ekaya grahim shraddhaya atma priya satam. Bhakti, this bhakti is so powerful. Bhakti punati, bhakti punati man nishtha. Again, man nishtha. Fixed in me. Bhakti punati purifies man nishtha. Shwepakan api sambhava. Even somebody has sanskar of previous great karma that one is born. In a dog eater strategy, Shwapakan, Api Sambhavan, born in a dog eater strategy. Need not be dog eater himself, but the sanskar or out of sanskar, if one is born in such a low class, still if he comes across the pure devotees, if he starts following the process of pure devotion service, then the dosha of being born in a low class family, because one becomes abominable, untouchable, or whatever, you know, we don't associate with, the, with those people. But the, with the adoption of your divorce to service, he becomes worshipable, he becomes he becomes free from that, uh, that stigma of being born in the first place. And then Krishna further describes, Na sadheti maam yogo na sankhya dharma utava Na swadhyaya stapas tyago yatha bhakti mamo urjitati brida bhakti yogo 
na sadhi only by exclusive devotion to my son but see the nature when pralhad what's his name dhruv maharaj dhruv maharaj intensity because only krishna can fulfill my desire so his avesh was not in what he wanted his avesh became absorbed in krishna his avesh was not of bhakti but in bhakti is a very subtle difference in we can be performing apparently taking krishna's name and doing bhakti but our focus absorption could be on an ulterior motive which you want to fulfill but in case of dhruva maharaj although he began with some ulterior motive but when he realized that only hari can fulfill my desire then his focus his absorption got into hari and in that absorption krishna was attracted so krishna says as far as endearing oneself na tathami priyatamo atma yoni na sankara krishna says that uh, even my son brahma brahma is krishna son atma yoni born of myself he is not as dear to me atma na sankara my devotee shankara who is uh, always meditating on me yogi devotee is not as dear to me न तथामि प्रियतमो आत्म योनि न संकर न संकर्षण है नोर माय ब्रदर बलराम इज एस डियर न च संकर्षण न श्री नोर माय वाइफ टू लव टू गॉड इज फॉर इज फॉर फॉर यू नैवात्मा नॉट इवन माय सेल्फ सो डियर टू माय सेल्फ यथा भवान एज मच एज यू आर डियर टू सो दिस इज वेयर कृष्णा उस उद्धव जी बिकॉज़ ऑफ हिज एक्सक्लूसिव डिवोशन टू कृष्णा विदाउट एनी मोटिवेशन always concern about the lord's comfort and everything and krishna says you are more dear to me than than myself or oh, this is very much. but when it comes to the gopis krishna says na pare ham nirvadya sanyujam swasadhu kritya vibudha yusha piva yama bhajan durjar ge hasankhala What is the next line? Samrishya tadva hai pratiya tu sadhana. Your your sadhuta, your pure devotion, your dedication, your love. Let it be its own reward. Krishna shows in in Kerala. Krishna finds himself because the kind of sacrifice unconditional. See the pure devotees demonstrate. Krishna is on. Krishna feels that uh, he is no match to them. Can you imagine? Krishna, the all capable, Sarva Sama, Sarvesh Varishvara, he acknowledges, he admits that he is no match. His love for Gopis is no match to Gopis' love for him. Now this is this is very far out. So what the what the scriptures here they are trying to educate us, you know, uh, through Bhagavatam. They are taking us gradually, you know, or depending on our adhikar. two kinds of instructions in the veda the scriptures contain you know uddishta what is ultimate purpose you know param kalyan uddishta uddeshya kya hai shastron ka they want us to become pure devotees of krishna we are, they want us to target the the only object the ultimate object of love krishna you know and become become fully interested to fall in love with him but the adhikar is missing in the conditioned state uh, uh, even if people are told that this is your ultimate uh, goal ultimate purpose but they uh, it is so subtle ultimate goal of life is very subtle and people are in gross in gross uh, modes so how to so the vedas have figured out a way you know, they have given this uh, uh, dharma uh, param dharma is not possible immediately directly for most people so the second day dharma indirect path the varnashtam dharma but eventually it is meant to lead to param dharma that that uh, purpose should not be uh, forgotten uh, so the exclusive direct path of pure bhakti versus the indirect path of varnashtam dharma within the get within the control but the purpose of both is ultimately the same that is the thing you know there, there is an example given uh, when uh, people want to uh, 
uh, Arundhati star. There is a star called Arundhati in the sky. It is very small. It's very dim. It is very difficult to be seen in the sky without assistance. So if someone's objective is to see it, you know, this is the objective, this is the ultimate object of Vedas, to be able to see Krishna, to be able to connect to Krishna. But it is very subtle and we are engrossed by so many gross layers of sanskaras and conditions. How to, how to remove them? Uh, directly it wouldn't be possible. So the, uh, his indicator will be the biggest star here is the biggest, biggest, biggest star is visible, the small star. So the pole star they call. Then the biggest star closest to it is, uh, is the indication. Nirdishta. Uddishta is that uh, Arundhati star, but Nirdishta, okay. Where is that little star? Oh, it is it is close to the biggest star, which is very easily visible. Can you think how wonderful the Vedas are describing? Nirdishta Vishaya. So all the Vedas indicate that the absolute reality beyond the three modes. Right? Nirguna, Nistre uh, Gunya Bhavajana is the subject matter of the Vedas. Really, the three gunas are not the subject matters of Vedas uh, in real sense, apparently only. Only Nirdishta. It is the Uddishta Vishaya. It is the real purpose, Nirguna. But because the absolute reality cannot be understood in the conditioned state immediately. The Vedas first describe Sagun Tattva within three, three modes you know, with which one can relate. So Adhikar Bhed, Sanskar in Adhikar Bhed. But how it could be uh, transcended through Satsanga? Tatodu Sangha Mutsuchya. All the Satsanga, if one comes in touch with a pure Sadhu, then his Sanskar, just as Krishna says, uh, Svepakan Api, Svepakan Api Sambhavan, this pure devotional service, how one follows? Only by coming under the shelter of a pure devotee. Bhakti Sanjayate Bhaktya Bhagavad Bhakti Bhagavad Bhakti Sangena Parijayate Krishna Bhakti Mool Hai Janma Mool Hai Sadhu Sangha. So when it comes in, in Satsangha, then even the dosha of his sanskara and dosha of his lower adhikara, they become toppled and one becomes interested. In the ultimate subject matter of the Vedas and not become baffled by the Trigunya Vishya Veda and this why Krishna this Trigunya Bhavajana that is the real purpose of it. So Maya which, which we talk about the, the consisting of three modes of material nature, mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. Okay. So this is this appears as the initial initially the subject matter of the Vedas but ultimately if he goes little deeper Krishna and if you listen to Krishna's instructions especially in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says oh Arjuna do not become or remain entangled in this uh, Vishaya, in this uh, apparent three gunas you know? but rather attain the transcendental entity or that which has been indicated to be the real subject matter the Vedas want us to transcend this realm of three modes of material nature so, so some parts of the Vedic literatures have prescribed karma based on the modes of passion and ignorance. Other parts have prescribed uh, knowledge, you know, based on the mode of goodness. Because when we uh, talk about jnana, you know, it is basically the mode of goodness that is the connotation. Because jnana means separating from matter to the spirit. That is the basic thing. But that is only in the mode of uh, mode of goodness. Ultimately, we have to transcend both. And how we will transcend this? How, how will? By pure devotional service. So, the certain sections which describe or glorify the pure devotional service in the Vedas, they, be, they become our focus. Pure Bhakti, which is free from the modes. So, Krishna is telling us, you know, you should attain pure spiritual existence by becoming free from the dualities. Nirdvando Nitya Sattvasa. Nitya Sattvasa means associate with the pure devotees. Because when Krishna says, Traigunya Vishya Veda, Nistraigunya Bhavajana means become free from the three modes. And if he here says uh, Nitya Sattvastha, Nitya means eternal, Sattva means mode of goodness, Stha means become situated. If Krishna says become situated eternally in mode of goodness, no, that is not. Krishna is saying in pure goodness. Because 
And who is in situated in pure goodness? Nitya Sattvastha is the pure devotees. So he's asking, associate with my pure devotees, renounce the endeavor for acquisition. You know, yoga, endeavor, even prayer, even expecting Lord to fulfill because Lord is all capable, he's opulent. No, uh, free your consciousness from that uh, expectation of yoga and shema. And uh, prescribing duties, you know, people perform prescribed duties, uh, acquiring knowledge, become free from the modes of nature by process of uh, buddhi yoga. So buddhi yoga means pure devotional service. So that is the aspect. So here in Srimad Bhagavatam, in conclusion, uh, I would like to just uh, express our greatest gratitude to the association of purest devotees. You know, our Sri Guru provided to us and uh, through that effect, uh, uh, we have become all blessed to understand what is the essence, ultimate or the highest nature of pure devotional service uh, to attain uh, the very and the exclusive goal of our human uh, existence uh, in this process of pure devotional service, Krishna consciousness. So if we, if we focus, then uh, we will ultimately we are be able to attain in our sadhana and our conscience and consciousness will be absorbed in pure bhajan uh, rather than uh, thinking of uh, uh, one's self-centeredness or thinking of uh, Krishna for any other motive. So thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> any question or comment or anything one wants to add, please come forward. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj and Arjuna, man, thank you for this nice class. I think your time is up. Have, yeah, we, we have two hands raised. We will take both of the questions and we will see. Oh. Yes, Ajit Prabhu, please. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat. Hare Krishna, Dandavat, all questions. Maharaj, uh, you mentioned now means uh, this uh, the uh, difference. I hope you have told there is a difference between interested in bhakti and interested for bhakti. Am I correct? Are you all Maharaj? Can you hear me? Our Avesh. Our Avesh. Our, our passion. Our absorption. In bhakti or off bhakti? No, you, you told off bhakti or for bhakti and in bhakti? In bhakti interested. and off, off bhakti. Interested off bhakti and interested in bhakti? In bhakti. Yeah, You're not interested uh, uh, our passion, you know. Our passion. So which is better means interest we are interested in bhakti or interested of not not, not not interested <clears throat> our passion our absorption okay our absorption in bhakti for our uh, absorption uh, our passion uh, of bhakti that i am uh, i am performing so much bhakti i am such a great devotee you know, I am doing this much mala, I am doing this much seva, this much. Okay, okay. They say, I, 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 ness, you know, me, 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 ye, bakri pana. Jab avesh bhakti me hota hai, then one, one only relishes uh, Krishna's uh, greatness, his madhurya. Ultimately, madhurya bhagavata saad. Because uh, uh, often times what happens, is we perform pure devotional service uh, or the Islims, uh, then the, the, the feeling comes that I'm I'm great. I'm becoming now I become very pure. Like Nasta Prayash or British, I become free from all other because I'm uh, so the self self-obsession still remains even while apparently performing pure devotional service. How to become free from self how how to make Krishna the focus of our obsession? Or, uh, you know, that that would be the key. 
because all this ragadvesh and competition and all these things uh, because uh, because uh, we have great uh, high appraisal of ourselves uh, i am such a great person why 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 others don't treat me uh, as i should be treated you know so we are we are plagued we become stuck with our own self aggrandizement or uh, self uh, promotion that uh, that deprives us to become absorbed in pure devotional service that was the thing all right yes maharaj thank you but yeah. one thing can be also you know because this uh, in the initial stage maharaj this uh, uh, to uh, like you told definitely we don't have to be interest, means uh, passion we should not be like aggrandize ourselves but you know this passion for chanting for doing service unless we have passion passion is required to do activity so now uh, yeah in the pure state it can be a spiritual passion i don't know but this 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 why bhagavata says na vasudeva bhagavati bhakti yoga prayojita janayati ashu vairam gyanam che tad ahetukam ahetuki gyan means experiencing the joy of performing pure devotion service then uh, the self self uh, self centeredness will be gone because you are so absorbed in experiencing the joy of krishna's name etc you know so only when one is not uh, absorbed in bhakti one becomes conscious of himself performing so much bhakti so, what the yeah. point yes you know, because the joy joy experience is so superlative so overwhelming you know then uh, where is the question of uh, uh, thinking or aspiring for how much prestige i will get how much glorification i will get and all the things you know you are ex- you are experiencing uh, the joy the bliss of krishna you know, the way is the way is the temptation of the wish uh, or uh, uh, joy of uh, getting glorification from others or uh, you know this Uh, this is the only way when we become absorbed in pure devotional service uh, we become uh, free from we 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 least care uh, what uh, others think about us or uh, anything like that because uh, we are fully absorbed in what krishna thinks about us and what shri guru thinks about us and for their sake we can sacrifice uh, bothering and caring for what others think about us our focus is krishna and shri guru you know so then um, then our uh, we are absorbed for their well being you know? so that is the only motivation it's not that uh, we perform your pure devotion without any more any ulterior motivation ulterior means anything which puts us in the center rather than krishna and shri should be clear yes maharaj thank you hari krishna hello shyam krishna ji please या हरे कृष्णा महाराज हरे कृष्णा हां डन बोल प्लीज आई सर मा हंबल बाय सेंसेस महाराज माय क्वेश्चन इज इन द लास्ट फ्यू लाइंस ऑफ द परपर्ट वेयर इट्स प्रोपद राइट्स दैट द लॉर्ड इज प्रिपेयर्ड टू एक्सेप्ट व्हाटएवर द डिवोटी कैन सिक्योर टू वर्शिप हिम एंड देयर इज नो नीड टू आर्टिफिशियली एक्सर्ट वन सेल्फ यस so can you please little bit explain that uh, which which are the instances where the devotees they try to exert themselves instead of being uh, you know in natural yeah <coughs> ultimately uh, one has to give oneself rather, rather than you know like in atma samarpan bali maharaj even when he was able to uh, give more than anybody ever ever gave you know but that that was not sufficient but when he gave himself uh, that included everything so in the same way uh, we are not in krishna jai we are not defined by uh, what we possess or uh, anything 
or uh, what we want to give Krishna more than we want to give ourselves to Krishna. So whatever uh, has come in our possession uh, due to our uh, whatever situation, circumstances, Krishna is interested in us offering ourselves to him. Then uh, the things, uh, Krishna's whole mission since eternity is to get the conditions so to become a pure devotee. And so Krishna understands that, uh, our intention. That's why Prabhupada writes, uh, it is better to be plain and simple. And with respect, we don't have to prove anything, whether we can earn so much or we can grave this much or that. As long as we, our consciousness becomes, remains imbued with pure love, offering ourselves all time. We are ready to offer ourselves completely all time. With external things, more or less doesn't matter. Krishna is uh, Krishna in his supreme position because he's the uh, possessor, he is the proprietor of everything, and he's the uh, best well wisher of all of us. So what Krishna expects from us is uh, uh, not trying to uh, please him with a uh, matter endeavor, you know, because the things do come in, in our lives. So if we become, uh, if we focus on Offering ourselves, Krishna, then whatever we have naturally, it will be. If we can, if we can secure naturally uh, things uh, without forgetting Krishna, but in the process of uh, acquiring things, if we forget Krishna, then it would be a big loss because we have lost uh, ourselves. Then everything is lost. So if one can exert, one can do endeavor. With the capacity or the sanskar or the guna karma which he has received, uh, thinking of glorifying Krishna in a particular way, and if he uh, if he succeeds, uh, that's great. But uh, that is but uh, that is not for everyone. Krishna doesn't uh, doesn't judge people how much what in matter they have offered him. Krishna knows the intention. Krishna knows the heart. So if you have, if you are all the times ready to give your heart to Krishna, everything will come along with it. No? That's that's the point. Actually. Because if if you have millions and billions of uh, property and everything, and uh, it would be very difficult for many many times people to exert to offer it. Somebody is to push you. So exert exerting is uh, not only. Uh, trying to get something more by liver, but uh, uh, when one has so much, uh, uh, it may be difficult uh, uh, to sacrifice. That's why the better position is that when we have hardly anything, we can offer ourselves completely. We don't have to endeavor to become, oh, Krishna, first I will become a billionaire, then I will donate to you millions. You understand? Or I want to give you million dollar, or, uh, and uh, in the endeavor, we lose our whole focus. Our focus has to be always primarily uh, Krishna, and any endeavor which uh, throws us off of that focus, uh, that is exerting. And Krishna doesn't want us to do that because um, uh, Krishna wants to use our attitude to serve uh, through so many means, every, the whole existence, every iota is an instrument of Krishna and when Krishna wants to bring uh, the means, we can have so much we cannot even handle. So, giving ready, readying oneself to give oneself to Krishna, uh, that should be the only effort on the part of uh, sadhana, not trying to grave uh, seeing that others are giving so much, uh, why I'm not able to give so much. Uh, but if you give yourself, you Krishna thinks that you are, you are given the maximum. You know? That's why Krishna doesn't see what uh, what one gives, but what one keeps. So if you don't keep anything, you give yourself completely, Krishna appreciates it more. Like Guru Mahaja once told us, you know, he told that uh, Rajpati gave me everything. You know? I was there, I was on the, 
person. So that appreciation, can you think of that appreciation Guru Maharaj expressed? Similarly, Krishna expresses when he knows whether you are giving it all out or not. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for the beautiful explanation from all the different angles. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, we have two more hands raised, so we will take them quickly. Yes, Amritaji, please. Pradam, Shri Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's a wonderful lecture, and uh, everything is explained very nicely, but uh, though the shloka 2.45 which you explained Trayguna Vishaya Veda in that shloka the word uh, Atmavan is little bit explain the word Atmavan like, like Dhanavan correct we say Dhanavan one who possesses Dhana Gyanavan Acharyavan so Van has two connotations one who possesses and also one who is surrendered to. Like Acharya one means one who has, one who has uh, received an Acharya, a pure devotee, and is shelter. So in the same way, Atmavan, uh, so what, what Krishna means by saying Atmavan means uh, you become, uh, you are, uh, you are always with me. You know? I am always with you. This is the realization Krishna is indicating. <laughs> You are Atmavan. Realize your, your status. Uh, it should be the. It shouldn't be at all difficult for you to, to understand that you are Atmavan. You are fully surrendered to me. You are my associate, so I'm fully with you also. So both way, uh, we all have to become Atmavan. We have to realize. We have to realize this is status of uh, ours that you. Uh, Krishna resides in my heart uh, since since eternity. He has resided, and uh, so Krishna, we are so dear to Krishna. Should we not also uh, also make uh, Krishna very dear to us? That should be the mission. That how we do this, and we realize that uh, Atmavan, we have we also have to take shelter of Krishna. Uh, and so when Arjuna accepts Krishna's uh, this, uh, you know, boost, Krishna, you belong to this club. You are my eternal associate. So if we want to identify with that, uh, this is what uh, Bhagavad Gita is meant. So Krishna is speaking directly to us, directly to us also. Uh, we should identify with the position of uh, Arjuna in this regard. We, it's not that because Arjuna is Kshatriya, somebody is Brahman or Vaishya Sutra. This Atmavan is for every living entity. Atmavan Bhava. The Lord is residing in, your, in our heart. He's always with us. When will we be always with the Lord? Only by constant remembering him. That how much he cares for us, how much he loves us. So naturally, for us to be able to love Krishna should be the natural thing uh, rather than keeping uh, uh, like trade um, like, a, like a businessman or something. Motive, motive based relationship. Okay Krishna you are great and I like you because uh, you will take care of me. That is an understatement. This is what Krishna is telling. That to think of me in terms of yoga shema it is, it is not very intelligent when the kind of, a kind of relationship we have with you. Atmavan is the only thing which should be focused and not anything else. Okay? So Atmavan means uh, uh, to, to realize that uh, uh, Krishna, we, we always possess Krishna in our heart. Krishna is agreed. Uh, to be possessed by us, but we have not acted to that uh, because we have not uh, honored Krishna. Somebody has come in our heart ready to take the place and we have ignored, we have not realized uh, the most dear person or most well-wisher is so near to us, but we have distanced ourselves 
uh, from him because of our own wrong attitude. So that's the that's the purpose. I'm staring. Thank you, Shri. Wonderful. Thank you, Maharaji. Let's have uh, respect, Maharaji, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dandot Pranam Maharaji. Thank you very much for uh, giving such a wonderful summary of both Gita and Bhagavatam together. <laughs> yeah, they have the same message. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question. Yes. Sir. Is that uh, uh, this Chetushlogi Bhagavad Gita? Yes. Where? How, how they became Chetushlogi Bhagavad Gita? Is it mentioned somewhere in the scripture or some Acharya has told it? Or uh, uh, how, how they are? Uh, they, Chetushlogi Bhagavad Gita, they, number they. one. Number two, uh, the sloka which you have mentioned which describes uh, the true message or spirit or uh, summary of Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> if uh, if if the Chatushloki Bhagavad Gita is true, how that is outside of the Chatushloki Bhagavad Gita? Well, there are four slokas, correct? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. <laughs> this is one sloka. <laughs> so yeah, one but sloka... still four slokas should have some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the connotation of four slokas are three tattvas, you know, Sammandha, Videya, and Triyodhan. Yeah. And throughout Srimad Bhagavatam, with the Sammandha Gyan, connection to Krishna is uh, mentioned, it is so uplifting, so glorious. Wow! Just to think that I am part and parcel of Krishna, it puts me in a very glorious position. However, insignificant, utterly small I am, but the relevance of my existence, the relevance of uh, my surviving is that I am part of Krishna, I am meant for Krishna. Krishna can use me. Have I readied myself to be used by Krishna all times unconditionally? Because I am his. This notion, this Samandha Gyan is so potent. And then how to nurture this Samandha Gyan? Then the process is given Abhide. You know. and, uh, and what is the what is the motivation to follow the process that you are in love of Krishna? You experience the bliss of Krishna Seva, Sevananda, the Ananda of doing Seva to Krishna. That is always kept the secret, you know, so Rahasya, that Rahasya is put in the center. So in Chatu Shloki, the first two slokas, first sloka describes what Krishna is. Second sloka describes what Krishna is not, because uh, uh, both are Anvai Vatirek. In Anvai Bhava, what is Krishna uh, described? And what Krishna is not, the Maya aspect, that is also required yeah, because only... <clears throat> we are vapor. And the third sloka of Chatu Shloki, describe the Rahasya, the Suprema Bhakti. And the fourth sloka is the Sadhana Bhakti. So this is a very beautiful uh, combination because unless we have the uh, motivation for uh, pure Bhakti, we won't uh, be able to follow the Sadhana Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti in, includes a lot of austerity and, and deliberately, voluntarily accepting the uncomfortable situation because we are so conditioned into so many uh, unwanted conditions. But uh, the motivation comes from, wow, I can, I can do Krishna's service. I can dance with Krishna, different aspirations, uh, Sadhaka said. So, uh, Bhagavati Achalo Bhava Yad Bhagavata Sangat hai. The Abhideya is always presented at the end, you know. Bhagavati Achalo Bhava, to, uh, to become a pure devotee of Krishna, that is the motivation put in the center. And how to accomplish that? Yad Bhagavata Sangat hai. By becoming attached to a pure devotee, you become, you, you realize, uh, you realize your attachment uh, to Krishna. Yat Sevaya Bhagavatas Kutas Tashya Madhudvishya Rati Raso Bhavet Tipra Padayur Vyasanadna by the process. If one wants to become attain Rati Raso Bhavet Tipra, if one wants to attain uh, very fast or Tipra Rati or attachment and bhava for Krishna, the process is Yat Sevaya. 
by serving the spiritual master, serving the pure devotee. Uh, that is the cause because uh, if one directly tries to uh, experience uh, the rati towards Krishna, it is not allowed. <laughs> this is Bhagavad Dharma. The process uh, has to be followed. So uh, why one becomes motivated uh, to follow the process? Because oh, I can experience the, the, the transcendence and the sweetness of Krishna. We have to we have to follow the process by becoming a taste the service of a pure devotee. Actually. So coming to this, uh, so in Bhagavad Gita, this Chatushloki in the chapter 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, basically all three aspects uh, are very much uh, emphasized. Krishna revealing the secret. So, Samanda Gyan, the first shloka, and the whole four shlokas, they basically, in order to attract Krishna's special favor, Krishna says, Desham Satata Yuktanam, Bhajatam Priti Purvatam. Dadami buddhi yogam tam jenama upiyanti. Very clear. Then, then tesha vivan kampalti. Ankampalti. Special verse. Aham agyana jam tam nashyami atma bhakti jyana jyana bhakti jyana. So Krishna uh, becomes involved personally. That is, that is what uh, attracting Krishna is special verse. When Krishna becomes. Uh, Krishna becomes uh, inclined to, to become involved, to bless the sadhana especially. Then he follows the process. Then one attains the special favor of Krishna. So that's why, because uh, our accomplishing the goal, it is very concentratedly described in this four shloka. Samanda Gyan Aham Sarvasya Prabhu Matta Sarvam Pravatate Kiti Matva Bhagavati Vam Buddha Bhav Samadhita. Samanda Gyan so beautifully described. Becoming interested in Krishna through opulence. Samanda Gyan means the Swarup of Krishna is uh, exposed. But uh, uh, the Prajavasis, uh, Prajavasis, uh, they fall in love with Krishna, the Rupa. So they love Krishna. Loving Krishna means loving his Rupa. Not because of his swarupa, that he is God. Outside Raja, people becoming become interested in Krishna because of his swarupa. Oh, Krishna is so glorious, Krishna can do this, Krishna, all this. But Brajavasi's love is the superlative, purest because they love Krishna the rupa, not caring what his swarupa is, but because on the, in the absolute, there is no duality of swarupa and rupa. They, the gopis are glorious only because they fell in love with Krishna, even not caring whether he is God or not. That's why they are uh, superlative. Vimasriyo Vanachari Vyavichara Dushta Krishnaiche Krishnaika Chesha Paramatmani Rudh Bharat Nanvishwaron Nanvishwaron Bhajito Vidusho Pisakya Shreyas Tanoti the analogy is given that if one, uh, if one drinks the highest uh, medicine, ultimate, that is nectar, amrita, then uh, would, he not, uh, would he not get the effect of that? He will, he will attain eternal uh, life. Shreyas tanoti, shreyas means ultimate good. Shreyas tanoti means achieving the ultimate good. With or without knowledge of Krishna, so the gopis they simply love Krishna, the Rupa. But Krishna, being the supreme personality God, the effect was what? Effect was that they attained the highest destiny. Shreyas Tanoti Agad Raj. Agad means the medicine. Raj means the king or chief of medicine. That is Amrita. Ivopa Yukta. So if one if a text the, the nectar, he will become Amar. Yeah. Infallible. He will attain the absolute position. And, uh, 
that's why uh, ultimately we will find uh, to become attracted to Krishna in pure attraction, pure love. There is a supreme love, unconditional love. But Krishna, uh, in our uh, position, is the Chatushloki Bhagavatam. Krishna very much uh, clears that yes, Machitta Madhyate Pana Purvintam Paratam Tavyantasya Maam Krishna Dicha Ramam In Tesha Mevanu Kampatam, so those who follow the path of this uh, pure devotion service, it induces Krishna to bestow his special favor. Samanda Vidhe Prayojan. The Rahasya is how Krishna becomes inclined to make as possible to attain him. It has to be our absorption in bhajan rather than identifying how much bhajan I do. The question with actification will be asked. Krishna said, what is the second sloka of Chaputogi Bhagavad Gita? Esham Satatu Yuktanam, Bhajatam Kriti Turukam. What is this slogan? <laughs> I forgot. 10.9. Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tami. Yeah, Machitta Madgata Prana. This is what one has to become. Machitta Madgata Prana Bodhayanta Paransparam. So, is absorbed, becoming absorbed. So, if we absorb in Krishna ourselves, Krishna becomes absorbed in us. Same thing, 7.1. Maya Sakta, Mana Partha, Yugam, Yugam. So, this is the secret reveal also in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says that if you become attached to me with the mind, then I reveal myself completely. What, how is it possible? So Krishna becomes also attached to the devotee. Krishna wants to offer everything to him. Love, in love, nothing is kept secret. Everything is revealed. So, although Krishna is unlimited, he offers totally, without any reservation, without any holding back. You will, you can realize me completely. Asanchayam without any doubt. Samagram in completeness. So this machitta madgata prana bodhiyanta parasparam tathayantasya maam nityam tushyam tije raman tije. This is the process of uh, abhideya. In abhideya, when it attains absorption, tushyam tije raman tije, then Krishna becomes, when he becomes obsessed with Krishna, just like Dhruva Maharaj, when he becomes obsessed or become totally focused in Krishna, then Krishna also became focused in him. He became the object of Krishna's attraction. So however insignificant small we are, our relevance is that we can be, we can become the object or we, we can become blessed. Krishna can make us blessed to become the object of his attraction or his joy. Krishna loved Guru Mahārāj, Krishna loves the devotees who are Krishna teacher, Raman teacher, discussing about himself. Can we imagine how much Krishna is interested in, in the gopis and ultimately the most interested in Sri Radhani because of uh, their absorption in him at the highest level. That is Satu Shloka. Hare Krishna. I hope something is Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, uh, we can conclude for the day. Thank you for accommodating uh, extra time. Pancha Kalpita Vidhisya Chikasana Kalpita Vidhisya. Patita Anam Pavana Chikasana. His Holiness Pachiswaru Govind Mahara Maharaj ki jai. Thank you all for joining. See you all in tomorrow's class. Hare Krishna.